This is a CNN special report, America's space mission. At the Kennedy Space Center, CNN's Bernard Shaw. Good morning from the Kennedy Space Center here in Florida. It is now T minus 20 minutes and counting. 20 minutes with another scheduled built-in hole until the scheduled liftoff of the shuttle Discovery, taking with it five astronauts and the future of the American yeah, manned space program. Just a short while ago, the launch control told us that they closed the hatch there to the orbiter, and they're about to take the handle off. Bonnie Dunbar joins us as our technical advisor. She joined us yesterday. She flew around this planet 111 times. Welcome, and uh, we're waiting. What's the latest? Well, we just came out of the T-minus 20-minute hold. Uh, we will count down until the T-minus 9 hold. At that point, we will hold and uh, wait for reports on the weather balloon and the winds aloft. And we're now at 18, T-minus 18 and counting. There have been two launches of weather balloons. NASA received what they call a data dump from the first one, and now they're studying information now. I think we're very close to getting the information. Uh, we expect it very shortly. Uh, we, again, are still able to hold till 1.41 the, this afternoon. That's the window. That's the end of the window, launch window. Okay. Tony Clark is standing by at the Johnson Space Center in Houston. Tony? Good morning, Bernie. I think it was Admiral Truly who a month or so ago said, don't be surprised if there is a uh, delay or two in this first launch of the shuttle since the Challenger accident. And that's, in fact, what we've been seeing, surprisingly, because the weather is much better than anyone ever expected it would be at launch time. I think it was just a week or so ago that we were thinking about a hurricane delaying the launch. Now it is nicer weather than expected. I talked with a former astronaut who's here at the Johnson Space Center just a short time ago. He said that NASA tends to program into the computers in the shuttle a wide variation of, of wind speeds and directions uh, for this time of year, but no one was expecting the winds to be lighter than, uh, than they usually are this time of year. In fact, as I say, last week we were expecting high winds, perhaps hurricanes in this area. Over at Mission Control, there is a lot of excitement. Everyone is, is keyed up, but currently they're in kind of a holding position, monitoring the uh, consoles, the flight controllers. Arrived about four and a half hours ago. They've been watching the consoles, trying to get ready, just in case there is a launch this morning and seven seconds after liftoff. The control of the space shuttle shifts here to the Johnson Space Center. They're ready for that to happen right now. We don't know when that will happen or if it will happen uh, today or not. At this point, we are all simply waiting for word from the Cape, word whether the launch will be scrubbed or whether it will go in a uh, short time a little bit later this morning. And that's all we can do right now is, is wait, keep our fingers crossed, and if it goes today, people here at Mission Control say they're ready. If it goes tomorrow, they will be ready then. I'm Tony Clark, CNN, reporting live from the Johnson Space Center. Bernie? Of course, Discovery is the number one story, but as we've been indicating all morning long on your network of record, weather is trying to steal the show. John Holloman has been tracking the weather story. John, what's the latest? Bernie, there may be some potentially good news. As you know, the um, Air Force has been sending up weather balloons for the past three or four days, looking at winds throughout uh, the Discovery flight path. With us now is Colonel Ron Rand of the Air Force here at, uh, at the Kennedy Space Center. Colonel Rand, tell me uh, what you've received in information from the latest weather balloon um, to have sent back information to the ground. John, our latest balloon has given us some encouraging results. The, it appears the winds at upper levels have changed both in velocity and in the direction slightly in a way that uh, lessens the problems that NASA is looking at in terms of launching shuttle this morning. Yeah, now, before the shuttle can go up, the winds have to be from a specific direction at a specific speed based on the way the computer is programmed, as Tony Clark just explained to us. But uh, are they now within that, uh, that series of numbers that is OK? They're not there yet, but they're getting awfully close. They're, the direction is, is still out, but the, the velocity has lessened such that lessening the velocity lessens the impact of the winds being from the wrong direction. I see. So um, 
If you were a, a guessing man or a betting man, would you say uh, this trend, is there a trend? Is it moving in the right direction like over a, a several hour period? We've watched it all morning and it's been gradually improving and continue, uh, appears to continue to move in that direction. What happens next? Do you send up another balloon or have you sent up another one already? We sent up another balloon. We expect the results back in the next 15 to 20 minutes and we sent up a, a second balloon after that one and we should have the results back at about 10 o'clock. I see. So that's going to continue, I guess, all the way through the large window, correct? More balloons going up? That's correct. We actually have to launch as late as 15 minutes after the launch to, to continue to check the upper level results after the shuttle goes through through the atmosphere. All right. So um, if you were to, to summarize what you just told me, things are, are not uh, totally right on for this launch from the wind, but they're moving in the right direction. That's exactly right. All right. Colonel Ron Rand, thank you for joining us. John Holloman, CNN Live at the Kennedy Space Center. Now, let's go to Atlanta and Valerie Voss for a launch weather update. What do you show, Valerie? Well, Bernard, one of the other problems that uh, folks at the Cape have been concerned about for the launch have been showers and thunderstorms that could get too close to the launch site. Uh, supposedly, if they get within 10 miles, could produce a problem for the launch. We're looking at a loop of radar out of Daytona Beach, Florida. Here is the Cape. Starting earlier this morning, a few hours ago, we saw thunder showers popping up, and as the morning has progressed, those have moved and increased in coverage. They're moving in a southeasterly direction, and as we get to the most recent recent picture right there, you see that they have expanded and they are coming closer to the area of the Cape, so we're going to have to watch these very carefully as our forecasters at the Cape, unless they get into that 10-mile range. That would be too bad after winds are improving in the upper atmosphere to have thunder showers in the region uh, slow things down. And of course, as the afternoon progresses and uh, the sun heats the ground and the surface of the waters, we could get more convection, more rising air, more clouds, and a chance for those thunderstorms to multiply even more. Let's look at our satellite photograph now from 23,000 miles up. Basically, fair skies over much of the region, although you do see those thunder showers popping up. High pressures in the southeast, and it's brought generally uh, fair skies and calm winds and plenty of visibility to the region, which should be all good conditions for the launch. The only problem, those thunder showers, and of course, the high pressure in the upper atmosphere that was causing problems for the winds and the wind speed and direction, but it looks like that too may be improving. We'll have to see what happens with the balloons. They continue to watch down at the Cape. We go back now to Bernard Shaw for more coverage. And when we come back, we'll show you what a nominal launch looks like. That in a moment. And we join the voice of La NASA's launch control, Hugh Harris. NASA test director Frank Merlito, uh, uh, Merlino asking that all of the test team personnel uh, switch to a common channel, uh, which will they will remain on through the balance of the count. In that way, uh, each one of them is all getting the, the same information. Prior to this point, uh, they have been on separate channels in order to work the uh, uh, the various uh, activities uh, associated with their uh, functions. Fifteen seconds away from uh, entering the built-in hold at T minus nine. And we've had verification that the uh, fuel cell load adjust is complete and we are at T minus nine minutes and holding. As we come out of the hold, the ground launch sequencer takes over control, issuing commands for the final critical tasks and monitoring as many as a thousand different measurements during the final nine minutes of the count. Uh, during this count, uh, we, which we expect to be extended, we'll be listening for uh, the completion of work uh, which has been underway. The countdown at T-minus nine minutes and holding. This is shuttle launch control. Of course, there are other scenarios which no one... I was just listening to see whether they would come back to us.